Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're doing a video that you guys love. You guys love these videos so much. It's been a while, it's been since March, but we're going to be talking about makeup. I'm not surprised it's on sale at Sephora. I always pick Sephora because Sephora is the one I love the most and where I tend to shop the most and so I'm usually looking at their sale site more than I am like Ulta or other beauty sites. You guys know how this goes and if you don't, this is just where I'm going to be talking about some sale items and letting you guys know the reasons why I think that they're on sale and why I'm not surprised that they're there. And this isn't to shame anyone who's bought these things or likes these things. If anything, if you notice that something's on sale and you wanted it or like it, that's great because it's now even cheaper than it was before. But honestly, this video started started out I, I don't know, I started this video almost two years ago. I think it was more relevant then because not everything went on sale, but now with how much makeup is getting released all the time, I'm not surprised if anything goes on sale. Literally anything goes on sale, I'm like, yeah, not surprised, yeah, not surprised. Because it's like, there's just so much shit out there. Honestly, I feel like we can potentially use these trends, seeing like things go on sale as a great way as consumers to not buy things immediately. Maybe hold off, see if it ends up hitting the sale section in a couple of months, six months, and if you like it then still, still want to buy it maybe you can snag a deal and if you don't want it in six months then it doesn't even matter and you didn't spend your money in the first place which is like I feel like the win-win for us and I think the only other thing I have to say is like yeah I'm a little sassy these are just my thoughts honestly I don't know I don't know this shit I'm just telling you my freaking opinions on why I think this is on sale and why I'm definitely not surprised to see it there so let's get into the video all right we just have to start off with Kat Von D first like I'm not surprised anything of her stuff is on sale and the Sephora sale section honestly is just like like littered with her stuff. Mm, and honestly, I think we all kind of know why this stuff's on sale and why we're not surprised about it. Her controversies and kind of just the position that she's in right now. Many people are not using her stuff. Uh, many people are not associating with her brand and you guys can look into that drama on your own. And so seeing a lot of her products on the sale page is not surprising. It's like another way to entice people to potentially buy it if the sales are not good. Now, I don't know what the normal consumer is doing. I think that the beauty YouTube world is very much like this ecosystem and everyone kind of knows and we assume that other people like know all this shit too and are acting the same way, which is not true. A lot of people who are just casual beauty lovers maybe don't know about Kat Von D, so I don't know how much it's actually been impacted. I'd love to know if you work at Sephora or if you kind of know a little bit more about that, if you can leave those comments, we'd all be interested. I don't like making like generalizations or things without like having any proof, but I will say, I know at least in the online sphere, in the social media world, Kat Von D is definitely not being used as much as it was, especially because before it was such a star, like people loved Kat Von D. They were, you know, waiting for the new launches. They were waiting for the holiday collections and that definitely turned basically, it's been over a year now uh, since I feel like people haven't been. So some of the things that I thought were like the most prominent on there, the Alchemist palette, it was originally $32. It's on sale for 10. Some of these items might not be permanently on sale. It might be more of like a flash sale type of thing. So I don't know by the time I get this video up where they'll be. Sephora's sales section is sometimes confusing in that way. I feel like they're really bad at removing listings that are already sold out and I don't know if that's because they might get stock later and so they're like waiting to see if that happens if things come back in stock or what but sometimes things will be out of stock and I wish you could at least see that before like clicking on it you know I just wanted you guys to keep that in mind the Kat Von D brow struck dimension powder it was $21 it went down to $8 and I think that's another thing that's kind of I, I this is kind of surprising is like usually Sephora their prices they'll like bring it down like $10 max, but these ones are like slashed. Like the prices on these products are slashed in like half. It's crazy. The Saint and Sinner perfumes, originally $45 to $85, are now $27 to $55. That one's not as slashed as some of the other ones I've seen. The 10th anniversary highlighter in like the gold packaging was $30 and now it's $15. That's like totally in half, which is again, not normal. One of her like newer releases, the Vegan Love Palette, it was $43, now it's $21.50. This one is something that I'm not surprised on because one, it came out in the midst of all the controversy, but also I saw some reviews on this shit and oh my gosh, it was like shit. Oh my gosh. It was like some of the swatches were not good. I was like, ooh, what happened? So just looking at the swatches, I never had this palette. I don't buy from Kat Von D. That was definitely 
not surprising to see them there. But you kind of get the picture. I mean, it's kind of boring to keep going on and on about it. You guys get it. We all kind of get it, especially if you're here watching this video, like you're on YouTube, you know what's up. Next, let's talk about Natasha Denona because this is one that maybe your surprise is on sale, but on if I really try to like think about Natasha Denona, I'm not surprised some of the stuff is on sale because these are the earlier releases in her line, besides like the really, really big $250 palettes. So the Cranberry palette's on sale from $48 to $34. The Sunset palette is on sale from $129 down to $99. Same with the Lila palette, it was $129, now it's $99. And then there's also the Diamond and Blush palette, which was $89 and now it's $62. The reason I'm saying I'm not surprised that these are on sale, when I look at like the $129 palette, first off, the Sunset palette was kind of the one that everyone freaked out about, everyone bought. I remember everyone being like, this is so worth it. You have to get it. $129, who is that? I'd pay for that easy. So many people loved this color story at the time. Natasha Denona was just like this luxury thing that I feel like all of the influencers were pushing and saying was worth the price. And so at this point, either you bought it or you're not gonna get it. Like, I feel like the Sunset palette, the color story is just not as on trend currently. And so I think that it's a great way to move product for them to lower that price. I think that's what they're doing. Same with the Lila palette. I don't feel like this got nearly as much love. I bought this palette personally and I did not like it. I just don't really get on in general with the Natasha Denona formula, unfortunately. I want to so bad. I honestly like so much of like what comes out. I think it's really pretty, but when it comes to actually like loving the formula, especially for that price, I never do. And so for both those palettes, I'm not surprised that they're on sale because they're earlier and I just don't feel like they're as loved currently um, as some of the other things. I also do feel like Natasha Denona has switched up her pricing and packaging quite a bit recently. Like the second edition kind of to the sunset palette, what was it, the sun, wait, the sunrise? What? Which one's the sunrise? Am I saying these wrong? Let me like, I gotta double check this shit. Okay, no, the new one's a sunrise. I was right, okay, good. <laughs> the new sunrise palette, that one was $65. So basically half the price of the original palette with the same amount of shades, but they were smaller. And I feel like for such a long time, we're sitting there in the beauty community being like, well, Natasha Denona's worth it because you get so much product. And it's like, at this point, I think we're all past like the so much product uh, argument for why things are worth buying. It's like, no, 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 no. I have 700 million eyeshadow palettes. Like I'm never going through any of this shit and I think that maybe that hit Natasha Denona in a way she still is definitely what I would consider like a luxury price point her things are very expensive still but I do see her playing around with price point I do see her playing around with the amount of product that you're getting how small the pans are how big the pans are how they're formulated how they're arranged even with the Metropolis palette that one has quite a bit more shadow in it than these original 15 pan palettes but it's at the same price point as the 15 pan palette so you're still getting a deal in a way that way I'm still not buying the Metropolis Metropolis palette, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not surprised to see these older palettes on sale because of those price point changes. I think she's gonna definitely be switching up how she does things or how her sizing is um, as we go into the future. Same with the blush palette, the diamond and blush palette. I just don't really hear anyone talking about that. I feel like the in bloom, it's smaller. I just think that got way better reviews and reactions, maybe just cause it's newer. That's how our attention span is, I guess. But I'm not surprised to see that one on sale. They probably just wanna move those units. Next is the Urban Decay Born to Run. First off, not surprised, it's Urban Decay, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I love Urban Decay. I have a soft spot in my heart for like nostalgia for Urban Decay, but when it comes to the actual releases, unfortunately, I haven't had anything that just pulls me in and like I have to buy like it was in the past. And I think it's just mostly like my preferences have changed. Anyway, the Born to Run palette, I'm not surprised it's on sale because it's been off and on on sale, I feel like at Ulta. So I feel like it was only a matter of time before Sephora like had to essentially lower their prices to actually compete with that. As savvy beauty shoppers, once we see a palette be in the 21 Days of Beauty or just like go on some type of sale, I think we all are like, oh, well you can get it cheaper. Or if it starts showing up at TJ Maxx's, like no one's gonna pay for that full price. Once the word starts getting out that you can get it cheaper and I feel like that's kind of what happened with this one like they had to lower it next is a foundation that sucked 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 and that's why I'm not surprised it's on sale this one is from Marc Jacobs it's the shameless foundation I actually tried this one out because I got it sent to me from influencer I was so excited for this launch I could not wait for this launch I was seriously beyond excited and this sucked this product sucked so much the way that this foundation sat on the skin was horrible it never really sunk in it never 
like it just sat on top and it never set down either no matter how much powder you, it didn't matter this thing wanted to move around it wanted to look patchy as hell on your skin it just broke up and you can even see this in the formula because I had that product I don't even know how long but it started separating like immediately like it looked like I had had this product for years and years and years and I had had it like six months like it was a very short amount of time. It wasn't like it was super contaminated. It just wasn't a good product. I honestly feel like I repeated this whole situation with the new Kevin Aquan foundation because I also tried that out and I hated it and I feel like everyone hated it, but everyone was so excited for it and it just sucked. So spoiler, I won't be surprised when that one's on sale either. Next, let's talk about a palette from Lancome. This is the Big Heart Shaped Palette and this is actually really pretty. I like the idea of it. I think it's a little bit more fun and youthful for Lancome, but I'm not surprised it's on sale. I'm really not. It's a little bit bulky. I feel like color story wise, it goes with the theme of the heart, but like, okay. This retailed for $49 and it's down to $35 on the site. Uh, I really don't even feel like I need to say anything. It's just one of those ones that like you would buy because you think it's cute, but then you never actually use it and it's kind of bulky and it's just like sitting there and you're just like regretting everything. You wish you could go back in time and get your money back. I mean, that's kind of just what this palette was. I don't think there was enough creative vision behind it, like why they created it, what's going on with it, to me anyway, for what I know from the little bit I saw, but that's all. I, I didn't want to dig into it. I didn't want to know more about this. I just was like, okay, that's a palette. You put some pinks in, like, <laughs> all right. Definitely still a better version of like the Naked 3 than the Naked 3, but you know. <laughs> Next, let's talk about Stila. There are two things that I'm not surprised around sale from Stila on the site. So first are the Shade Mystere Liquid Shadows. These are like a part of their Glitter and Glow type of shadows, which everyone loves. Those are a star favorite. I mean, people aren't talking about them as much, but they're definitely still a beloved product in the community. And these were kind of like a spinoff. They're kind of like a straight to VHS, uh, Disney movie you know, like you know about it but like it's not as good as the original and you can tell that they didn't have like the same team as like the D team that's how this product felt honestly looking at the swatches I kind of would I think I would actually like them personally but I feel like that's how they were treated they just were not like received very well they weren't even received as well as like the ones that came right before this which were kind of like iridescent multi-chrome like really pretty ones these were just odd and I think the kind of selling point I don't know is that is that what we're calling it it's kind of like the gimmick I think is a better word for it uh for the these products was that they had like two different colors and like as you use them they kind of like go together but I, I just don't think that was enough to sell them and I don't think that they got enough press I just they just weren't they weren't it and we knew it we're like well I'll just watch the regular Lion King although Lion King 2 Simba's Pride is like the best like sequel movie I'm I you can fight me on it the soundtrack's amazing fight me let's fight <laughs> anyway I digress, I digress. The other product that I was not surprised to see hanging out on the sale page from Stila, this is the Stay All Day Foundation and Concealer. It was 40, now it's down to $20. And this is one of those kind of, again, the gimmicky, the gimmick is there. It has like a concealer attached to the foundation itself. I feel like this is one of those things that in theory, you're like, this would be a brilliant idea. <laughs> you're like, I just thought of a million dollar idea, but I just don't think in practice it works out as well. You either end up using the foundation or the concealer first, and then you just have like this wasted part of the product, and then and what do you do if you really like that concealer? Like, do you buy a whole new foundation with it as well? <laughs> like, I just don't think it's a practical product and I don't think many people like these types of products. Let me know if you do. Are you someone who likes that? I feel like the majority of us aren't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's talk about Becca. There are a ton of things from Becca on sale from the Champagne Pop Collector's Edition collection that came out. They basically were just relaunching products. There were like some new forms of Champagne Pop, but they relaunched Champagne Pop in this beautiful packaging. And then they had all these other versions of it that you could use to highlight in any which way you could possibly ever want to. <laughs> they had highlighter drops, which were 32 and now are 19. They had a glow gloss, which was this really pretty like golden lip gloss. It was 22, now it's 30. The Glow Dust Highlighter was just like a loose powder highlighter from 42 now down to 25. And then the Glow Body Stick from 48 now down to 29. I don't think the actual Becca highlighter, like the original in the powder compact that's just like more beautiful, actually went on sale. Oh no, of course not. Am I surprised about that? Of course not. <laughs> All the other shit went on sale. <laughs> All the other shit that we don't want. <laughs> the thing about this is I know it's such a beloved like product from Becca. This is definitely a 
classic like hero product from them especially in their shimmering skin perfectors which are beautiful I just think this came out a little bit late this is also tied to Jaclyn Hill because like she's the one I believe that came up with this color in general it just felt like maybe a little bit too late I think they came out with this like as like a certain anniversary like maybe it was like a five year so maybe they couldn't have possibly released it earlier if they were like sticking to that year benchmark but in general I just don't think anyone was like wanting to like get that there are so many other things that have come out since then that I don't think anyone was like needing to get it although I personally was attracted to this collection personally but I understand that I am not everyone else and I can understand what maybe the masses actually want <laughs> the other thing from Becca that I was like so not surprised to see this is the Becca and Khloe Kardashian glow letters oh my gosh okay this is another one of those things that's like this would be so cute we'll have a bunch of little bronzers in letters loose in a thing who wants that? No one wants that. I would love to see Chloe use that. Chloe, I want to see you try to bronze your freaking face with some letters. No one likes it. It's cute to look at, and that's absolutely it. It's not practical at all, and that's what makeup's supposed to be. It's supposed to be practical to use. It's a consumable product, <laughs> and if it's not practical to use, then it's just like a waste of money, and it eventually goes bad, so I am not surprised to see this on sale, although on the website, it says it was $18 originally, and then now it's down to 11 but I don't I don't think there's any way this was only $18 if it started at $18 they probably knew like maybe if we put the price point low enough <laughs> they'll actually buy it I think it started higher than that I'd be very shocked to learn that it actually started at $18 all right let's talk about some Sephora collection stuff I have something in my eye, which makes me look even more bitchy, but I promise it's just something in my eye. <laughs> so first off, the Sephora collection, Wish Upon a Star advent calendar. I can't remember if this is last year's advent calendar or this year's advent calendar. I literally don't give a shit, but I remember when <laughs> all of the stuff came out about these damn advent calendars. It says this originally was $36, which blows my mind. It's only down to 18, which I'm like, guys, you gotta let it go. You gotta like sell this thing for seven bucks. Like that's it, that's all it's worth. Some of the things in here were literally like sponge applicators to put eyeshadow on your eye. That is criminal, that is such criminal behavior, Sephora. No, not surprised at all. I think this thing got roasted to hell. No. <laughs> Next, Sephora had a couple collections, one with the Ice Cream Museum. If you don't live in LA, I don't, and you don't follow like influencers, I'm, I don't know if you would know what the Ice Cream Museum even is. Basically just like a pop-up where you can take photos and it's kind of like exhibits in a way that you can interact with that all had to do with like ice cream and sweets. It was really cool. So many of my friends and people in LA did it. I was like FOMOing the entire time. I think it might still be going on. I'm not even sure. It was definitely this kind of trend going on. Like you were cool if you went to the ice cream museum. And I think they were capitalizing on that. It's kind of a weird collection, although I love the idea of it. I love the idea of sweets and lollipops and all of this stuff. So I'm not like mad at it, but like at the same time, I'm definitely not surprised it's on sale because it's just kind of weird. It's like a little like, okay, odd. The sugar wafer face palette was 36, now it's 14. I will say prices, they cut these quite low. I think they've been on sale for a little bit. The Dream Team pigment palette is like in a little popsicle. Really cute, but it kind of looks like clear makeup it does look a little bit young I don't know I wouldn't be against like a sweet palette I just think it would have to be done like a correct way because if not it can just look really childish and I think that's definitely a drawback for like a big part of the audience you potentially could have anyway that was $42 now it's down to $18 and then there's this let them eat popsicles lip gloss set and it was 34 and now it's down to 12 they'd be cute things to like give your niece I feel like and I think that's a drawback for them the other collection had a little bit of controversy with it this is the Sephora and Moschino collection. This is, I believe, the second one. They had like this teddy bear palette that came out a while ago with a couple other things, and so I think this was the second collection they'd done together. The first one must have done well, and this one was all about like back to school, and so everything was like school related. They had like pencil brushes, they had liquid marker lip sets. They look like highlighters. Those were 34, now they're down to 17. They have this like cute little bear mask because Moschino has like the bear, I guess. Those are from eight down to four. The kind of main thing with this was the laptop palette which retailed for $60 now it's down to 30 it's like cut in half and then there's also the highlighter cheek set which these also looked like highlighters I think the liquid lipsticks also look like highlighters it's just different ones different shapes of highlighters and these were just like in a stick form and those retailed for 36 but now they're down to 18 so the whole controversy I think was with crayon case and they do like Crayola makeup and that type of stuff and so they kind of felt like this was their thing and then Moschino was coming in and capitalizing off of that and potentially 
potentially, right? Like that potentially could be the entire reason they even thought to do this collection. I don't know how I feel. And if that's the case, that's so shitty. But at the same time, I kind of feel like school supplies makeup is not a specific enough thing. I don't know. I don't know, is that just me? I just like, it's kind of like unicorns and Martians and like also even Beauty Bakery, they do like bakery type of makeup. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like that's a little bit broad. I love the idea of it. I love that their brand's based off of it. I don't think they should not do it. I don't know, I might get a little bit of flack. Let me know your thoughts though. I feel like with like baking powders, like the whole thing is that it's called your baking. It's kind of like not the most insane leap to go to like baking powder or flour or anything like that. And do that type of theme. That's just me personally. I just feel like it's a little bit generic and it's like, I want people to have freedom to like make things and create things and not have to be stifled just because someone else did something. Like you can have a different take on it. And I do think that these were different enough. It wasn't like the exact same type of products, but that definitely was a part of this collection. And maybe that was a reason that people didn't buy it. But I also just think like with these Sephora collections, honestly, a lot of the time they tend to go on sale. So if you really want something, it's probably gonna go on sale. Only a few more, I promise guys. <laughs> I wanted to make this long so you could really enjoy it. Next, Elizabeth and James. Basically all of the perfumes or a lot of them are on sale. So they have have the solid perfumes. Those are down from 48 to 37. The dry shampoos, which I remember everyone raving about, those are down from 14 to 11. The perfume oil in the Nirvana White, that is down from 35 to 27. And then they had two I had never even heard about, and that's part of the reason I'm not surprised. <laughs> the Nirvana Amethyst, I didn't even know they had a Nirvana Amethyst, but that's down from 85 to 65. And then there's a Nirvana French Grey Rollerball. The original perfume is also on sale from 60 68 down to 51 uh, and then they have corresponding prices depending on if you want the full size or the rollerball. Anyway, I'm not surprised that these are on sale. One, because these remind me of old school YouTube. I remember when everyone was talking about these. Nirvana White, I wanted it so bad. I bought this right before my wedding, which was in 2014 and we're in 2019. And I just feel like there are perfume staples. There are things that just stick around, but I haven't heard this being raved about. Like I remember perfumes and this specific perfume being raved about in the past. And so it's just kind of, I feel like a natural life cycle. Like at this time, I'm not surprised because it's it's run its course a bit. Also the fact that I had just not even heard of two of the different like scent variations kind of made me like, oh, like I didn't even hear about them at all. And I would have probably been at least a little bit interested if I had seen those somewhere in my feed or somewhere, you know? And so the fact that I didn't just tells me that I just don't think the audience is as much there. Maybe they are, but mm, I have a feeling they're not. And I wouldn't be surprised too if they like move out of Sephora. Okay, last two things, last two kind of categories, I guess. The Fenty Mademoiselle set. This is a set of lipsticks. You get 10 of them for $149 originally, but now you get it for a screaming deal of $74. I'm not surprised that this is on sale. One, I didn't hear the best reviews from these Mademoiselle lipsticks. I really didn't. I think some people like them, some people didn't like them. And so because of that, I just feel like to go all in for 10 lipsticks, it's like, that's a, that's a moment. That's like a decision, you know? <laughs> and then on top of that, these are a set 10. It's not even the whole collection. I feel like when brands do these kind of huge sets, like this, they're kind of capitalizing on this collector mentality of you want every single one, but they're like 23 shades of the Mademoiselle. And I don't think that there were only 10 when they first launched. So you weren't even getting all of them. I feel like that potentially, even though it would have been maybe a little bit more money, could have been like, if you're trying to capitalize on those completionists, like you could have gotten it maybe from there, but this is only 10. And then on top of that, the colors in it, some of them are like the green I think is in here, one of the blues or the purples, like there are definitely some of the more loud or bold colors in here, which I wouldn't necessarily mind, but I know that's not gonna be everyone's thing. And so you're buying them in a set and then a portion of them not being things you're gonna wear, I can definitely see why they dropped the price on it. And last, let's talk about a few things from Tarte. Tarte's Treasure Pot Glitter Gel, so cute. This is on sale and I'm not surprise I love glitter but uh, who's wearing the glitter seriously oh good okay good. Okay. it's my husband not Liam yay he's here, he's here. oh do you want to be in it the real Mrs. Schroeder's home the real Mrs. Schroeder's home <laughs> no you look cute scram get out of here thank you thank you thank you anyway before I got interrupted <laughs> I love glitter I think it's so cute and I was attracted to this pot but not for $18 which is what it was originally retailing for now it's nine which I think is a reasonable price but Potentially. I think in general these glitter products have like such a short window of time for people to buy It's like during festival season during Coachella. That's like it when else are people practically wearing these not that many people And I feel like the people that are wearing them got them for free in PR 
are and are also getting into those festivals for free also. I don't know, that's just me. If you're someone who goes to festivals all the time and uses this type of glitter, let me know. But I also feel like if you're someone who does use a lot of glitter, you probably have your own like concoction of like gel and glitter and you make your own and you do all this stuff because it's one, more cost effective and two, you love glitter, so like you have other shit, you know? Ultimately, not surprised. And last, the last thing we're gonna talk about is the Tardis Pro Remix palette. And this was originally $49. It's on sale for $36.75. I wonder what all the different price points, like if it ends in zero or if it ends in 75 or like 25, what that means. I don't know if that means it's like temporary or it's more like never coming back. I'm sure it has a code of some sort. I know Target has a code like that too. Anyway, back to the palette. This palette, I'm just not surprised because I personally didn't not like it so that's why I'm not surprised <laughs> I actually heard from a lot of you guys that you liked this palette or you thought it was more colorful than it was getting roasted for, but I disagree. I just don't think this was that colorful. I just hate it, like literally everything about this palette. I hated the background and like how it looked like 80s marble paint uh, was on the back of the palette. I really hated that. I didn't think that it let the shadow shine. If they had had a more, I don't know, it doesn't have to be black, but just something else in the background that was maybe a little bit more calm and let the color shine, it could have looked more colorful. But having such a bright background and then the colors, half of them were neutrals. Like at least half of them were neutrals. It's kind of like the Born to Run palette, honestly, and how it was colorful. I just think the packaging screwed it. Like it could have it could have been the Born to Run palette had the packaging not screwed it. And I also just, thinking about it, wonder if it being the second part to the original palette, I don't know how loved that really was. Was it? I feel like it was at the time where people just were kind of like letting that palette die. So I, I don't think it was like the best second release of something to attach it to. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. I'm sure you guys will. That's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Were you surprised that any of this stuff went on sale or not? Were there other things that you thought were gonna go on sale but didn't? I'd love to know your thoughts. Anyway, thank you for watching guys and I will see you in my next video.